Isaiah 42 verse 1. Isaiah 42 verse 1. So I don't like this, Jay, brother Jason. He chose, I don't like it. Doesn't seem fair to me. Isaiah 42, 1. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delight, if I put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth justice to the nation. So that's talking about Israel being chosen. Isaiah 43, 20. It says, the beast of the field, uh, the beast of the field shall honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. So he's chosen his people, Israel. Okay? God chooses. Um. Now let's turn to Luke chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. Luke chapter 24, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. Luke chapter 4, tw verse 25 and 26. Luke uh, chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. But I tell you of a truth, many widows. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, but only unto Zarephath, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So the Lord is saying here, look, there was a, there was a, um, a drought and only Elijah went to the widow. He didn't go to anybody else but the widow. The widow was chosen for the blessing, you see. And then uh, verse 27 to 29. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. So again, Elisha chose Naaman to be healed from his leprosy. He didn't choose all the lepers, but he just chose Naaman. So God chooses, you see. God chooses God chooses. So let's go back to Ephesians. So it says in verse 4, According he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. God chose you before the beginning of time. He had his, your name upon his heart. Now you might say, oh, Jay, I'd, you're a Calvinist and all this. and, and Forget that. Uh, the, forget the names. Let's go, go to the scripture. The scripture clearly says, according he has chosen us in him before the foundation of of the world. He chose you before the foundation of the world. So rest in that. Enjoy that. Receive that. Get comfort from that. That you were chosen. Now why did he choose you? Uh, 1 Peter 1. Let's go to 1 Peter. You were chosen for a reason. So let's go to 1 Peter chap chapter 1. 1 Peter One Peter, 
1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 and 9 2 to 9 elect according to we're going to read from verse 2 to 9 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 to 9 elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied Bless, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in this you greatly rejoice though now for a season if need you are in heaviness through manifold trials that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold than that though it, it be tried with fire might be found to the praise and honour and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ who having not seen you love in though you now see him not you believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your salvation your faith even the salvation of your souls now if you go back sorry about this yeah and then verse chapter 1 verse 15 but as he is but as he who hath called you is holy be ye holy in all manner of life so notice in this chapter verse 2 elect according to the foreknowledge of God it means that God chose you before the beginning of time he knew you it says elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit so you were called to sanctification you were called to walk a holy life you were called to a, a, a pure life and then it goes on about a, a living hope and that you suffer but you you are to hold on then as it gets to verse 15 it says but as he who, who has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of life uh, today many people uh, t are not uh, are not following God the way God um, has, has said in his word I, Recently, I, I, I've been preaching in a church and I was aghast to find out some of the standards that that church holds in morality. I couldn't believe it. This was a, a church that, that you wouldn't believe, you, you thought was a Bible-believing church, but they, 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 have slipped, they have slipped in some of their morality. And um, we've got to follow God's standards and live God's way. Uh, that's the bottom line and God chose you not for you to live your way and to do your thing he chose you for you to live his way let's go to verse 4 according he, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be what holy and without blame before him in love but to walk in a holy life in love so now we go to verse yeah let, let's just think about this chosen let's go to John 15 16 because some of you are troubled by it you're thinking well it's not fair how can God choose some and not others Listen, it's beyond our intellect. People have argued it for centuries. But you cannot get away from what scripture says. John 15, 16. 
It says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, and whatever you shall seek, uh, shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Alright? So, so, we hear these people say, well, uh, you have free will. Uh, come to Jesus, you have free will. You, you have free will. Okay? But let's just nail it down here. John chapter 15, verse 16, says this. Henceforth, I call you... Sorry. Uh, John fifteen sixteen. John chapter 15, verse 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You can't get more plainer than that. You say, well, no, we've got free will, Jay. We, we've got free will. We, we chose Jesus. We chose him. We have free will. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Don't try to make a systematic theology out of the Bible from your own intellect. When you read verses in the Bible like this, you've got to take them on board and listen to them. And if you try to be clever and smart and try to bring it all together in your own intellect, you will blow your mind away. What you have to do is humbly submit to Scripture. And it says here, as you humbly submit to Scripture, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But that's what scripture says. Now, turn to John 3.16. Turn to John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There he says, Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the gospel is offered to people. It's offered to everybody. It's offered to everybody. Turn to John 3, 36. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not shall not have life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. There the responsibility is on the individual to believe. So now you're scratching your head. Turn to Romans 10, 9. Romans 10 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved there is the responsibility of individuals to believe in Jesus Christ so you can say to somebody I wonder if they're chosen or not should I tell them the gospel if they're chosen, I'll tell them the gospel. No, you're to tell everybody the gospel and everybody is responsible to believe on Jesus. But if they believe on Jesus, it was God that chose them. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 2 Thessalonians 2.13 2 Thessalonians 2.13 It says... But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So I read that scripture again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. 
But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God, from the beginning, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief on the truth. So, God gets the glory because God chose, chose that person. When that person comes to know Jesus, it was God that chose them. So, I think, what, what is the cash value of this? What, what, what is the implication of this teaching? I think the implication of the teaching is that God is God. And that when we're doing evangelism, it's God that does the work. When people are saved, it's God that gets the glory. You see, all roads lead to God. So the teaching in, let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. And we'll have a break here and we'll carry on from here. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. I think the reason, uh, the, the, the cash value of believing that God chooses his people is I think number one, that God has the right. Number two, that God has the power. Number three, that God gets the glory. Number four, that God gives the blessing. I, I suppose the importance that God chooses is because of these reasons. And when we say, no, it's our free will that saves us, it's smashing at the greatness and the glory and the majesty, the blessing and the love of God to his people. So we must be very careful. We must be very, very careful in what we're saying. We offer the gospel to people. We say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they have a responsibility to believe. And those that do believe, it will be because God has chosen them. God has uh, opened their eyes to see the truth. But those who do not know the truth, those who, who, um, who do not see the truth, it is not that God rejects them. What it is, is that they are willfully blinded themselves and so God passes them by. So I hope, I hope that's a help. Um, there's more we could say on that topic. But um, I'm going to have a break for a few minutes. And we'll get into the final few verses. Well, well we've only got into verse 4. Uh, but we'll get into the rest of the chapter to verse uh, 14. We'll have a break. I'm going to get a glass of water. And we'll just have a break for a minute. So God bless you. And we'll be back in part 2. God bless you. <laughs> 